Praise God. Let's open our Bibles to the book of Luke, chapter 17 tonight. Luke, chapter 17. I do want to express my gratitude to your guys, to you guys, um, for being present and faithful tonight. Um, serving God day in and day out, service after service. Uh, may God bless your sacrifices. May God bless your faithfulness tonight. Um, it is always an honor to minister um, the gospel. You know what? I've been preaching for quite a while. I was um, talking to my wife about it. I've been preaching for seven years, going on eight almost. Um, and it's always a humbling task. Um, it's always you begin to prepare your sermons and you realize you're, you're not as smart as you think you are. Um, God begins to reveal some things and you begin to realize I read that 20 times and God, you're just saying that now. <laughs> Luke chapter 17 tonight. We're going to be in verse 26. Um, in 2016, there was a, um, uh, a event that rocked the sports world. Um, and this was a Brazilian team. Um, a Brazilian soccer team that was in the fourth division. This is like um, in soccer, there's levels of professional teams. Um, they were professionals, but they were in the fourth um, division, which doesn't get televised. They weren't very popular. Um, but they've made it to the first division over the years. In 2016, they're playing against all the top dogs of the Brazilian league and is beating everybody. So it's like a Cinderella story. And they were on the way to go play the final, uh, the, the, the final game to, for the championship. They were on a plane when the plane crashed, killing the whole team, um, the whole coaching um, staff, and everybody, obviously, that the staff on the, on the plane. It was 71 people who died that day. In the article, after a few days of investigation, the... the uh, the air airline called La Mia, um, which is a Bolivian company, came out with an article, and it was entitled that said, A Lack of Fuel Caused the Crash. And I want to read that. It says, A Lack of Fuel Caused the 2016 Crash of a Charter Flight Carrying a Brazilian Soccer Team. The Colombian Aviation Agency said Friday during a press conference in Bogota, the official report indicates the Bolivian company, La Mia, did not make the decision to land at another airport to refuel before it reached its destination, even though they were aware of the small amount of fuel needed to complete this flight. Now, you can do this in your car. We do this in our car many times. We try to run it as, as empty as we can. You shouldn't, by the way. But we do that. You don't do that on an airplane. They were aware of the small amount of fuel needed to complete this flight. Players, coaches, and invited guests from Brazil's, um, the team is called Chapecoense, um, soccer team were on board the charter flight on November 28, 2016 when it crashed. 71 people were killed and six survived. Lack of fuel was the cause. In other words, procrastination. Say with me, procrastination. Procrastination was the reason why 71 people died that day. And I want to bring a truth to that into our life because our life has this very truth um, activated or active in our lives. And that is that procrastination can have a major effect in your life. When you begin to procrastinate on certain things in life, and we're going to go into all the details of how we've gotten away with things and how many times the mindsets and how we think of things. But I want to tell you tonight, the reality is, and I know this is a very sharp statement, but procrastination will send you to hell. If you allow it to, if you wait too long, if you always say the next minute, the next second, I'll do it later, many times that can take you into a place where you lose destiny, you lose salvation. You know, I just, I just want to make this comment. You know, many of us, when we disobey God, we don't deliberately disobey God. God tells us to do something. We don't just say, no, nah, we're not going to do it. No, God. I'm not going to do that today. You know how that how normally sounds? God, I'll do it tomorrow. God, I'll do it later. Okay, God, I know what you want from me. I'll get it done after. 
later, whatever that blank is statement with. After I'm, I'm, when I'm an adult, after I graduate college, after I get my career, after I get my plan B set, many times that's how we procrastinate under the will of God. Luke chapter 17, verse 26. You can say amen when you're there. It says, just as it was in the days of Noah, um, so, thank you, so will it be in the days of the Son of Man. Verse 27, they were eating and drinking and marrying and being given in marriage until the day when Noah entered the ark, which is the last day, and the flood came and destroyed them all. Procrastination will send you to hell tonight. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this very um, evening that you have given us, God, for continually being good to us, God. God, I pray that we will get this revelation tonight, God. Father, to continue to serve you for the rest of our lives, God. God, that we will listen to your words, God, that we will hear you out, God, and that we will act on them, Father. God, that only, you only have to say it once, Lord. God, I pray that, that we will never, God, or we won't continue to procrastinate when it comes down to your, to your will, your destiny for us, God, and your kingdom, Father. We trust you, Lord. God, I pray that you will anoint the words that come out of my mouth tonight, God. Father, I hide behind your cross, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. And the people of God said tonight, amen. amen. I want to start off with my first thought, and that is the curse of procrastination. See, I had, I had a scheme trying to go together, I guess a, a play on words. But I wanted to just kind of relate this to many of us. Because how many of you guys know, we're, a lot of us, we're procrastinators. Or you've procrastinated before. Or sometimes you've, you've uh, you know, you, you just don't want to do the work, right? However you want to justify it. But many of us suffer from this disease of procrastination, right? And I want to just bring out some attributes to this very disease or causes, right? However you want to just play on the words. One of them is laziness. How many of you guys are lazy tonight? How many of you guys have the tendency to be lazy? Shout amen tonight. <laughs> That somewhere you're like, man, if it wasn't for this or if it wasn't for me being responsible or being an adult, my default mode would be just a couch. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 6 through 11 says, go to the ant, O sluggard, consider her ways and be wise without having any chief officer or ruler. She prepares her bread in summer and gathers her food in harvest. Check this out. Verse 9. How long will you lie there, O sluggard? In other words, O couch potato, O procrastinator, O lazy. Um, when, will, when will you arise from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, and poverty will come upon you like a robber and want like an armed man. Somewhere, church, you have to understand that we cannot procrastinate and we can't be lazy. There's no time for laziness in life. You, you understand this maybe from a business perspective, maybe from a financial perspective. I want to throw that in the mix also, the kingdom perspective. There's no time for being lazy. Many times that's one of the reasons why we procrastinate on things. We just don't want to do it. We just don't feel like it. I just want to chill tonight. My head hurts. Or whatever the case may be, somewhere you begin to tap into this very lazy spirit. Another one is lack of preparation. Lack of preparation. You didn't think it through or you didn't care to. You can fill that in in whatever in life. I know I'm talking about spiritual matters, but what about just your regular life? What about finances? What about all the physical areas of life? Many times it's not, it's just you just don't care to do it. You know, one of the things that um, in the beginning, what we struggle with, and even to this day, I don't really like to mess with budgets. I just don't. I don't like to sit down and add numbers, but I know we have to do it. And I understand many times that my wife, she's, she's good at this. You know, she's writing things down or, and all these different things. But many times, it's lack of preparation. What about apathy? Many times, we just don't care what's going to happen. We just don't care about the outcome. You know, many times, you do, many times people don't care about how this is going to affect other people. I just don't care. I don't care how it's going to make my brother feel. I don't care how it's going to make my wife feel. I don't care how it's going to make my husband feel. I don't feel like doing it. You don't care how it's going to affect the people around you. Can I make this statement tonight? It's not cute to say I'm a last-minute person. You ever heard anybody say that? 
Oh, if it wasn't for the last minute, man, I wouldn't get anything done. That's not cute. That's not, that, that doesn't make me like you more. That doesn't make me want to do business with you. When I hear that, that I'm the, if it wasn't for the last minute, in my mind, I'm not thinking, oh, you're the guy I'm looking for. Yeah, all my last minutes. You can have them. It's especially frustrating in business and ministry. Whenever you trust men or, or women with ministry and leadership and just the last minute is when they do things. Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 4 says, He who absorbs the wind will not sow, and he who regards the clouds will not reap. In other words, distracted. That somewhere your focus is out of whack. That you're not paying attention to what, what, what the things that you have to do. You see, the problem tonight is that we foolishly, say with me, foolishly. We foolishly believe that we have our last minute guaranteed and ready for us. We foolishly think, I don't have to prepare. I can just do it. I've heard guys before say, you know, even in sermon writing, oh, I'll wait. Pressure, man. Pressure helps me prepare sermons. <laughs> I don't. Anyway, procrastination, check this out, is the act of willfully delaying the doing of something that should be done. In other words, you're pushing it to the side willfully. That's somewhere you're saying, I'm not going to deal with this at this very second. I'll deal with that later. And if you guys are kind of tra tracing me or kind of following me and understand that this is might be able, you might be able to do that with your math test. You might be able to do that with some type of uh, shore. I mean, men are experts at doing this, right? The trash stays there for a while. But you cannot do that in the will of God. You cannot do that in spiritual matters. You can't just hear God and say, I'll do that later. We see in our scripture, it says like in the days of Noah, there was people doing all kinds of other things. And see, the context here is that Noah, as he was street preaching, as he was telling them about what God was going to do, the wrath is going to come down. Noah's screaming, God's going to flood the earth. He's going to judge your sin. Somewhere the Bible says they continue to keep on doing what they're doing until that day. Until that day where Noah goes in the ark and then God judges. We foolishly believe that we have that last minute. Many times we, in our lives, we, we, we begin to push away God's will to seek what makes us happy. James 4, 17, so whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it, for him it is sin. In other words, if you keep on pushing away what God has called you to do, somewhere you're falling into sin. Sin, by definition, it's rebellion. Say with me, rebellion. Have you ever dealt with rebellious people, rebellious children? You tell them to do something and they won't do it. And somewhere you're pushing it to the side. In your mind, you've justified yourself. It's not that I'm not doing it. I'm just going to do it later. My timing. I'll do it whenever I want to doesn't work that way with God. It might have worked with your mama. It might have worked with your dad, your teacher. You might have been able to throw to, to prepare that essay for the last minute. You know, guys know what I'm talking about, right? That due date, it was Tuesday. So on Tuesday, you're doing it. <laughs> and you're throwing it in there, and you got away with it. Not in the kingdom of God. In other words, you are not doing what you should be doing. That's rebellion. That's disobedience. And we can't just sugarcoat it tonight. What's that meme goes? That meme, <laughs> you can't just sugarcoat it because you'll eat that too. You know, somewhere we can't just talk nice about things. Procrastination is just a big fancy word for disobedience. You're just pushing it to the side and just waiting for the right time. And that right time is always that last minute when you know you've been caught. You know you've been, you're going to get judged. That door is closing. The scripture says, into the day Noah entered the ark. What about you tonight? Have you procrastinated on God's will? Is there something that God has been calling you to do? And somewhere you've pushed it to the side? Seeking other things. God, I'll do your will after I get my degree. God, I'll, I'll, I'll do your will after, after work. I can't even. There's some, some people, it's crazy. They won't even talk about Jesus until they punch out. What about you tonight? You know, while the last minute might save us in life sometimes, it's not going to happen in our spiritual life. You know, the Bible says that God keeps good books. Can I tell you that God is, 
You can't mock God. God is not to be mocked. He's not just some guy that you can lie to. He's not your mom. You, you know, you got, how many of you guys can think back? You got away with some things from your parents. Some of you guys today, you're, you're criminals, but you haven't been caught. <laughs> you did some illegal things in life, but the cops didn't catch you. Not God. It doesn't happen with God. In life, many times we can get away with procrastinating, but this isn't true when it comes down to our salvation. Let me just give you some examples of procrastination gone right. We spoke about college, right, when we, when we are able to, or high school, when you're able to turn in that paper right on time. Your bills, you're able to get away with a payment arrangement. Hallelujah. Someone shout amen right now. Be real with me tonight. Can I preach? <laughs> you know, I was reading this article about procrastination. And it says, I once, and by once, I mean this past week, picked up an entirely new hobby. It's called cross-stitching. And I did this to avoid writing a paper abstract for a conference. I purchased a cross-stitch kit on Amazon, waited two days for it to arrive, designed my own pattern, and stitched the whole thing. Then I wrote the whole abstract um, paper essay in 48 minutes, starting 49 minutes before the deadline to submit it. She learned a whole new hobby. <laughs> so you might get away with, with it in petty things, but not concerning your life. I mean, this, and, and I'll give you guys just a few more examples, but I mean, you guys really got to think about this. In the kingdom of God, you don't have that last minute. In your life, you don't have it. What about the rapture tonight? Amen. The rapture has this element of surprise that somewhere that last minute is not yours. Turn to your neighbor tell him that last minute is not yours. It's in the future. Your future, who does it belong to? Who does your future belong to, church? Amen. It belongs to God. That last minute is not yours. In the rapture, the last minute is, isn't forecasted. Tomorrow is promised to no one. It's something that we constantly say. Life and death have an element of surprise. How many of our friends died young? How many of the people that you know died at an early age? Procrastination many times. Actually, you can almost say all the times translates to the avoiding of issues and responsibilities. You just don't want to grow up. Preach to me tonight. Come on. You just don't want to grow up. All procrastination, listen to me, all of it will eventually catch up to you. Everything that you push to the side and say, I'll do it one day, will eventually catch up to you. How many marriages, ministries, in lives, do we see in pieces because of ignored issues? Because some more they said, I will deal with this later. I don't want to deal with this today. And you see them in pieces? I want to tell you tonight, church, laziness will catch up to you. Sin will catch up to you. Cheating will catch up to you. Lying will catch up to you. And this, for some reason... This has been embedded in our culture. You can even say our generation. You guys know the song, right? I was going to clean my room until I got high. You know, and, the idea, and some of what he's, what he's saying is that I was going to do something, but I avoided it with something else. I was exactly sin. I was going to do this. This is my responsibility, but I decided to do something else, and I avoided my responsibility. You can sing this song. You can, you can analyze the lyrics, but the reality is that many of our lives, that's exactly what's happening. And it might not be getting high. Maybe it's a hobby. Maybe it's cross-stitching. <laughs> Maybe you're just, you know, somewhere, in, and it happens, right? You get on your computer, you're, you're going to sit there, I'm going to study, I'm going to write my sermon. And you pull up YouTube, and there's flipping cats. <laughs> fails, epic fails, Right? <laughs> And somewhere you begin to click on that, especially now in the transfer of information, how quick things can get to you. There are lives at this moment who are in ruins because of the avoiding of responsibility. Because the man didn't want to own up to what his role was. Because the woman didn't want to deal with the things that he needed to deal with. We can speak about Moses. Moses on his way to Egypt, you know, he doesn't want to circumcise his child. And God, the Bible says that God is there to kill him. He says he was not to rebuke him, not to just spank him, but to kill him. He was going to meet with Moses to finish him. And then the wife takes care of business, procrastination. 
See, procrastination, in essence, is a selfish ignoring of issues. I want to go to my second point, and that is that procrastination causes a lot of pain and setback in life and destiny. See, procrastination, you might be able to get away with it in your normal life, but in your destiny in the kingdom, it'll set you back and cause a lot of pain. Procrastination is a selfish ignoring of issues. God will deal with you about things that need to be dealt with to continue your path to destiny. And if you procrastinate on that, it has to do many times with your selfishness. I want to do something else. God, I know what you're saying, but I, but I, I want to do this. See, procrastination can cause you to miss God's destiny for you. And this is where I really want you guys to, to really get the, uh, the revelation because God's on the move. God's will is on the move. The kingdom keeps on going. If you don't want it to, even if you don't want to be part of it, God continues to move. The kingdom of God is pressing on. And if we want to be a part of it, we need to jump on board. Get in, get out, or get run over. Amen. There is a pressing need for laborers that is linked to your destiny. Check this out in Matthew chapter 9, verse 35 tonight. It says, and Jesus went through all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them um, because they were, her, uh, they were harassed and helpless like sheep without shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, their harvest is plentiful. There's a big need, but the laborers are few. There's no people that will actually do meet the need. Verse 38, therefore pray earnestly for the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest. That's the prayer you pray. But if you really dig into it, you should be praying, God, help us with these lazy men. God, help us with women who don't want to fill up their roles. God, help us with churches that won't do the will of God, that they'll procrastinate it, they'll push it to the side and develop other issues. Why isn't our softball team winning? <laughs> Why isn't this happening? Why, and all these different things, the real question is, why isn't there laborers? Why isn't there people preaching the word of God? If you won't answer the call, then there are people who are affected. I, I even dare to say there's people, salvation, that are linked to your answering of the call. And if you procrast procrastinate that, what do you think they'll end up? If you're not going to preach the gospel to people, then the Bible says, how, they, how should they hear if no one preaches? The will of God is you aligning yourself with God, not aligning God with your worldly desires. Is you put in positioning yourself where God wants, you, God wants you, not positioning God where you want him. See, procrastination can cause you to miss out. Even on the salvation that God has for you. How many people do we see that won't get right with God? How many people do we see deceived? You know the guy's a sinner. You know the girl. You know she ain't right. But they won't answer altar calls. They sat through the very same sermon you did. You're convicted. You're safe, but you're convicted. And they're not. I want to tell you tonight, a relationship with Jesus is not just another opportunity. It's the opportunity. Today is your only day. The present, what you have at this very second, is the only guarantee you have to do something. Is the only guarantee. Your life, anything that you want to do, your, all of your endeavors, your dreams, your plans, all you have to prepare for it is today. Now. Husbands, love your wife today. Wives, love your husbands today. Work hard today, not tomorrow. Work hard today. Preach today. Pray today. You want to chase God? Don't chase him tomorrow. Chase him today. I'm going to close with my third point. Because I don't want to just scream at you guys tonight. <laughs> my, my third point is that the gospel is not try harder. But it is tapping into God's favor. I'm going to make sense out of this tonight. Because the reality tonight is that many of us fear what God has in store for us. Many of us many times see our issue or like Ezekiel walks into these valley of dry bones and say, man, I can't do anything about this. 
You know, the reality is that the gospel is not try harder. That's not what the gospel should, um, should uh, illustrate. That's not what the gospel is. And if you ever thought that that's what it was, you got it wrong. The Bible is full of flawed people who are used by God. Jacob, you guys ever heard that name? He's a liar, or he was a liar. Moses, remember Moses? Moses was selfish. I mean, think about this story of him going to Egypt and Zipporah has to deal with it. He doesn't want to deal with this child. That's selfish. You don't want to spank your kids. That's selfish. Oh, but I love them. You don't love them. You're selfish. You don't want to deal with them. You don't, want to, you don't want to do anything about it. You want to avoid the confrontation. You want to avoid the responsibility that you have. And this is why God is dealing with Moses. He's selfish. Jonah, disobedient. Noah, a drunk. The common attributes that you see through these flawed people is simple. Is that they were, they were taking struggling steps of obedience. I'm talking about twisting ankles and everything. Jacob wrestled God. Moses fell dead on his face one time facing God. Jonah in the, in, the, in the belly of a well. I mean, think about all these things. Abraham, flawed people, but they took steps of obedience, even if they were struggling, even if they weren't really a step but a slide, whatever it was, they took it. And see, my question to you tonight is, are you ignoring God? Or are you just struggling to do right? There's a difference. Are you just blatantly disobeying God? Or are you pushing to try to do right? Are you taking steps of obedience? Or are you backsliding? You know, steps of obedience is what triggers miracles. Because the reality is that we can look at our lives and many times we procrastinate because it's just over our heads. The kingdom of God is over everybody's head. Every single one of us tonight. It's over every single, nobody's qualified here. And you can easily look at it and say, this is my destiny. I can't do anything about it. God, I'll prepare my life right now, my physical life right now. I'll make sure I'll make money right now. And God, if I have time. You know, the reality is tonight, and I hope you guys can agree with me tonight, is that all of us need a miracle to finish this race called life. We all need a miracle. Every single one of us. It doesn't matter how smart you are tonight or how dumb you are. You need a miracle from God. And what you should be seeking is to obey God. Do what God says. If God says it, do it. If he, if, he, if he says something, the words of God, you do it. The idea is that we can come to Jesus and he will take care of our mess. Our procrastination many times is we won't come to Jesus. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 says, come to me. Say with me, come to me. All who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. If you're ignoring God and not going to him, you cannot expect growth and advancement. You can't expect to achieve your destiny if you won't even go to God. See, there are no shortcuts to your destiny in God. There's no shortcuts. You can't reroute on your GPS to find the fastest routes. Avoid tolls. <laughs> you can't do that. It's what God sets up for you. It's what God, the test he puts on there, the obstacles that he puts on there. And somewhere your procrastination is that you get to a place and you say, I don't want to deal with that. I don't want to deal with that issue. I don't want to deal with that, with, that, with, that, uh, with that problem. So I'm going to go do something else. See, the problem is that we go do that, and then we come back, and we expect that somewhere God's going to keep on moving us forward. But the problem is that if you stop at an issue, and then you leave and you come back, I promise you, you'll be back at the same issue. Right. You'll be back at that same place, and God is still working on you in those things. Aren't you glad that Zippro actually did something and Moses didn't get killed? I mean, think about this. It's in the very same thing, I believe, it's in the book of Exodus, um, where, where, this is, where this is all going down. The chapter before, God, God has, Moses has that burning bush experience with God. 
And then further down the road, he's on his way to Egypt because that's what God told him to do, go to Egypt. But he still has some things to deal with, and that's why God says, you've been ignoring me. Yes, I've called you, but you've been ignoring me. Can I tell you tonight, it's not enough to be called. Many people like to justify it that way. Oh, I'm called. Yeah, well, do something about it. You know what's another thing that people do? They mistake um, that blessing is an approval from God. Can I tell you, throughout the Bible, you see God use flawed people. God blessed people. Moses over here, Zipporah had to take care of business, but he goes and delivers Israel. He has issues in his marriage. Zipporah gets the foreskins and throws it at him and says, you are, our hus- you are a husband of blood to me. How many of you guys know the story? You're a husband of blood to me. He didn't want to circumcise his child. So Zipporah grabs a flint, which is a stone, takes care of business, grabs the foreskins, throws it at Moses and says, you are a husband of blood to me. God doesn't kill him. He continues on and delivers a whole nation. His wife took care of business, but God still has an issue with her. See, today, what I'm trying to say is that I don't know your future, but God does. And somewhere, procrastination isn't helping you. You saying, you know what, I'm just going to do something else for, at the, for this moment isn't helping you. God knows what exactly to do with your life. And the best thing you can do is act on God's word. You need to listen, identify And then get a hold of God. I understand there's some things that might be over your head. And you might say, you know what? I can't deal with that. Well, that's when you get a hold of God. God, you give me strength. We read Matthew 11, 28 with that idea that you can come to Jesus. The message of the gospel is not try harder. harder. Think about this. Is that we had an issue called sin that we couldn't do anything about it. So what happened? God got involved. That is the essence of the gospel. And that's what you need in your life. That you look at those valley of dry bones. You look at those situations that you can't do anything about it. Don't procrastinate, but go to God and say, God, help me. Give me the strength. Your battle of finances, God, help me. Help me. Give me. Show me. Put people that can direct me, instruct me. You got an issue with sin, addiction, whatever it is. You go to God and say, God, I can't handle this. I want to leave you with this. We all need God's involvement in our destiny with him. None of us are prepared. This is why Paul had to be blind for three days. Smart man. Resourceful man. Dual citizenship. He got all the the credibilities, but God says, for my kingdom, you're going to have to go through some things. You might be qualified for the world, but for my kingdom, you still need to do some things. And this is exactly what needs to happen in our lives. Procrastination will send you to hell if you let it. You can push, you can, you can, you can avoid God all the way to hell. But tonight, let, let that not be the story of us. Let that not be the story of our church. That somewhere we take God's word seriously. God says evangelize the world. Well, we're going to start what we, what we can. We're going to extend our reach as far as we can. And God will begin to open doors for us. But if we procrastinate on it, we'll stay here. We won't grow. Am I making sense tonight? It will send you to hell if you let it. Can I get every head bowed and every eye closed?